Noctua NH-D15 Chrome Max Black. This is the CPU cooler that we have temperature testing done for today's video. The results of this really surprised me. There's a certain part of the video like jump to, there is timestamps in the description below. My other links down that may interest you. Don't forget the all that fun YouTube stuff on that way down that description box. Without wasting a lot of your time, let's flip you over here. We'll show you what components make up today's test bed. For today's test bed, we have the CPU as the Ryzen 7 5800X. That is sitting on top of the Gigabyte B550 Force Pro motherboard. We are running G Shield Drift All 5 Series, 16 gigs, 2 8 gig sticks, running at 3600 megahertz speed. For today's testing, that was overclocked to the 3600 megahertz speed. As far as storage go, we have the Silicon Power 512 gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. Graphical Power, it is the gigabyte radio and RX 5600 XT Windforce OC cores. To power everything, we have the EVGA 650 GQ 210. It is 650 watts, 80 plus gold certified, semi-modular power supply. And for the case, we have the Cooler Master Half XB Evo High Airflow Case. As far as the case goes, I do have two fans in the front and an XB120 in the back. I believe that's pretty indicative of the way most people would be running the system. As far as the cores we got that we're putting it up against today, we have the Noctua NHD15. We have the Cooler Master Master Air MA610P. We have the Intermax Aqua Fusion 120 all-in-one liquid cooler with ARGB. We have the Ergo AT240 240mm CPU liquid cooler. And we have Be Quiet Pure Loop 240mm all-in-one water cooling system. Them is the parts that we're using in today's test bench and the way we're running the components. The way I do my testing, I run a center bench R23 by a half hour stress test three times. Then I take the average and the maximum temperatures out in three runs. I average them out to get them two different results. While I am running Cinebench R23, I also have Heaven Benchmark running in the background on the loop. That way that GPU is producing as much heat as possible inside the case. The only thing in the system that's ever clocked is the memory. It's up to 3600 megahertz speed. Everything else is reading out of the box settings. So we ran down through the components to make up today's test bed. We ran down through the coolers that I put it against. Now comes for the surprise. We're gonna look at the results and see how this thing compared to these other coolers that we put it against. Okay, here we go. Max temperatures is in black. The average temperature is in orange. We have the Aqua Fusion, which is 120 millimeter all in one. Max temperature was 88.3. The average was 84.1. The Noctua NHD 15 comes in a max of 83.5. The average is 79.7. The Pure Loop 240 millimeter all in one came in a max of 81.6 with an average of 77.4. The Ergo AT 240mm came in a max of 79.8 and it came in as an average of 74.8. The Cooler Master MA610P came in a max of 68 and an average of 64.7. These results really really surprised me. It did just a little bit better than what the 120 millimeter all in one did. I figured this thing would be cooler than what the Cooler Master Cooler was. First time I ran these tests, I wasn't happy with the results. So I took it back off. I repasted it. I put the cooler back on. I made sure all the fans were facing the right way. I thought maybe I had a fan on backwards or something. But still yet, at the end of the day, even after doing it twice, these are the numbers I ended up with. Let me flip you over here and I'll show you the screenshots after an hour and a half of each run on test one and test two show you what the results difference was after repasting all right here we go test one is on the left test two is on the right you can see the max temperature within the hour and a half of running hit 84.9 and the average was 80 on test one after repasting it make sure all the fans was facing the right way and everything like that i still ended up with a max temperature of 83.5 with a max and 79.7 as you can tell on a little chore here, I did take the best of the two after I did the repaste job on it. And before anybody puts it in the comments, the room temperature was 68 degrees Celsius. I have an AC unit in the room, so I know it's a 68 degrees. And if it gets too cold, I know the heaters are going to kick on to keep it at 68 degrees or within a few degrees of 68 degrees. So the ambient temperature in the room had no effect on this. This was across the board, 68 degrees in the room at all times for all these tests. And no, there ain't no windows, new windows updates, there's no driver updates or nothing like this because this test bench has never been hooked up to the internet since I built the test rig. So I know everything is exactly the same in between each test. 
This being a dual tire styro cooler with two 140 millimeter fans on it, I figured this thing would perform a lot better. I figured it even beat that Cooler Master cooler, but it didn't. I figured the temperature should be closer to that because that Cooler Master cooler's only got two 120 millimeter fans with one heat sink. I can't figure out why this thing didn't do as didn't do as well as what I thought. Maybe I just had too high of expectations for it because Noctu is known to be one of the better air coolers out there. This thing is well built. It does look nice in the case. It is a beast. I mean, it is a massive air cooler. I think that's why I'm so surprised by the results of it not doing so well. Like I mentioned, this thing is well built. It is easy to install. It looks good inside the case with it being as big as it is. There is no ARGB on it. Like it or dislike that point of it. But do I really think it's worth the money? For the money, the Cooler Master Cooler that I put it against in today's video does a lot better job of cooling that CPU. They actually got the ARGB that a lot of people want within the rig. So I think you'd be better off to buy the Cooler Master Cooler. I can't do no kind of sound testing. I'm not set up for that. So if you're looking for sound tests, I'm sorry, but I can't provide them kind of numbers for you. I'm just not set up for that kind of content. Not yet anyways. But I think you got better options out there if you're looking for a performance cooler than over top of this Noctua cooler. That's the results I got in today, today's testing. There is a link in the description below if you'd like to have a little bit more information on this cooler or if you'd like to pick one up. There's also some other links down there that may interest you. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff when you're way down that description box. You all have a good day and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.